opportunity to repent for any and all sins, every thought, every ideal, any type of a mindset that could have transgressed your will for our lives. We stand right now in reverence to you and ask you to forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us by your word and your righteousness alone. For without you, we can do nothing. But because of you, all things are possible. So we're asking you today, know our heart is to turn towards you. Let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. You are Yahweh, our Elohim, and we love you today. We magnify you for who you are in the precious, mighty, and matchless name of Yeshua HaMashiach, our Savior and our King. Amen. All right, everybody. Good to see you today. Tracy Wade. You know, I miss you. I love you, Tracy Wade. Y'all bring her up here today. Everybody. I want y'all to understand that we are here today to get some things accomplished and we want to talk about it because Monday I'm going to start back up with the uh, state of a black American citizen with the kingdom perspective on next coming Monday to bring some of these other items into fruition for many of you that you might know and understand uh, that we are still in a crisis uh, and the crisis does not mean that we do not act watch this. I don't even like using the word, but for the sake of a game, a word or play on words, we are in a crisis, but we are not to act not like Christ, not like Messiah. All right. And I want you all to get that because many people think that when you get into a crisis or we're in a situation where we have to deal with the world, the world's not dealing with us rightly, we should get out of our face and we should become indignant and we should uh, actually uh, act however we feel we need to act. And I need you to know that we are supposed to be first and foremost um, what Yahweh says to be, and that is like him. So we are to remember to follow peace with all men because holiness without which none of us who want to see Elohim are going to see Elohim. You want to act out and blow out because you can, though you should not based on the word. Um, it will, it will, it will, it will put us in a place where we're not in right stead with the Father. So we're going to be talking about the um, the state of the Black American citizen um, with a kingdom perspective. How should we operate based on the kingdom? So in order to do that and really come back into that rightly, I have to show today what the kingdom is all about. And like I've told you guys before, everybody preaching uh, kingdom today does not understand kingdom. It seems to have been a new viral trending, popular uh, phrase, coin phrase, idiom uh, that people are using because it sounds good. There is a real life and spirit to kingdom life. Today, I'm going to show you biblically the proper vetting for kingdom life within um, our faith. Our faith comes from our father who is Yahweh our Elohim, that's the Hebrew word for God the Father, and uh, he speaks it through Adonai our Elohim, that's the Hebrew word for God the Son, and it's performed once heard by Ruach HaKodesh, that is the Hebrew word for God the Holy Spirit. You see that demonstrated and vetted out in Belshitz Genesis chapter 1, and God said, and there was, right? So uh, we want to make that clear. So today, as we talk from the proceeding word, remember this, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahweh our Elohim. The words that proceed out of the mouth of Yahweh our Elohim are literally, are literally, are literally the instructions for humanity. All right, Facebook, come on in. I know you guys are here. Hit the heart sign, hit the like sign. IG, I'm not sure we got IG hooked up yet, but IG and YouTube, you guys, you're there. You can make your comments. But everybody on Facebook, I see more eyes than I see hearts. I need to see equal hearts and eyes. All right. So let's talk about this. Moderators, we're gonna, I'm going to give you guys the floor. I want to make this one announcement <clears throat> with respects to um, what's coming up next um here today we're going to be coming in everybody's keep pressing us about the kyc coursing the know your calling coursing we do a course um called know your calling uh and know your calling is going to be starting on august the 9th i don't know how this got up here um but it's here okay so on august the 9th um we're going to be beginning the know your calling class for this particular uh this time it's going to be happening before we go into the feast of sukkah so those of you who are really um, compelled, and we begin a lot of emails 
um, to learn what is my calling. How do I vet my calling for real? I know the prophet told me and I know the bishop told me, but really what is my calling? I'm, I'm ordained as a pastor. I'm ordained as an evangelist. I'm ordained as a prophet, prophetess. I'm ordained as this. That's what your organization did. They needed that slot filled. What did Yahweh call you to do? I would recommend you make sure you get that. And then you can go back and do your job that they ordained you to do in your church and organization in the earth. The kingdom has a whole different process for vetting. Uh, and we help you understand that. So the KYC, the Know Your Calling course will be begin. It's going to be on August the 9th. That's when we start. That'll be two Tuesdays, I think two Tuesdays from now or three Tuesdays from now. And uh, it will be we'll be doing it twice a day. One will be at 1 p.m. for the uh, 3 p.m. rather for the uh, European and uh, South African uh, group and the Vietnam group. Uh, and then we'll also be doing it at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the Continental U.S. of A. and those whose schedules are conducive. So you have two options to get into the 1 p.m. coursing or the, 7, the 3 p.m. coursing or the 7 p.m. coursing uh, starting August 9. Yes, it's a nominal tuition. Uh, <clears throat> and, and, and I hope that KYC graduates that are on this call can vouch for the fact that you're going to get a whole lot more. This ain't got nothing to do with money. <laughs> what you get in KYC, uh, you 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 brought a you brought a spoon uh, by virtue of your tuition, but you're walking away with a entire uh, you know truckload of information you never thought possible. And so that's going to be beginning because we're getting a lot of people calling us, hitting us up, emailing us at. So go ahead and email that to staff, email your inquiry to staff.kyc at gmail.com. All right. So you guys are really interested. We're going to be doing that. Hope you'll join in. Hope you'll catch up and we can go from there. All right. I got to get into the course today. Moderators, tell us why we're here, please. Would you do that for me? All right. So. We're going to keep here, moving. Sorry. Don't no sweat. We're, we're, we're going to keep moving. Hold up. We'll come back to it later. We'll do that later. Let's keep moving. So what we got to do is, 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 is get ready now for, for this kingdom life that is biblically explained. I want everybody to go to Matthew, Matthew, Matthew chapter and number, uh, you know, let's go to Matthew chapter three. Let's do that. Let's go to Matthew chapter three, Matthew chapter three. Everybody go there. Matthew chapter three. Now, how many of you guys are also keeping up with the 21 day fast? I want to know 21 day challenge, 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 not a fast challenge. How many of you guys are keeping up with the 21-day challenge? Anybody? All right. So so, so you guys are telling me that y'all get up in the morning and you're looking at that man or that woman in the mirror and you're asking yourself, who will I emulate today? And then you are to literally answer yourself while looking at yourself in the mirror and give one of two answers. I'm going to emulate his word or your other answer could be, I'm going to emulate the world. Well, I'm going to continue to emulate his word. That's my challenge for the next 21 days. I think we are day four or day five into this challenge. So let's keep it going. Hope you guys are making it your real bona fide effort. As soon as you get up, brush your teeth and then speak to yourself. Because, you know, some of y'all wake up with really bad breath. So brush your teeth, light, you know, light, light, you know, Lysol out your mouth or Listerine out your mouth and, and then talk to yourself. <laughs> it's, it's fun for it. Lysol. Hey, hey, if the old President Trump could say it for some kind of a sickness, and yeah, I think we can talk about it too. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop. You know, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop. You know, it's funny. I did make a mistake and spray Lysol in my face one day, uh, thinking it was a you know those little breath mints that you spray. I, I, I had a little small Lysol bottle and I had them next to each other. And I, I made the mistake. I picked up the wrong one. That was an experience I will never forget. I cried for like a whole two hours. All right, moving on. Today we're talking about the proceeding, the proceeding word. Hey, Facebook, I told y'all, when you come on Facebook, please hit that heart sign, hit that like sign, help our algorithms get moving so that people can actually see the room and you help us do that. You ain't got to give no money here. All you got to do here is give and pay attention. So if you're on Facebook, please hit the heart sign, hit the like sign so we can move our algorithm along. We love you to life eternal. We just need your help in that regard. Okay, so let's get moving. Matthew chapter number three, let's talk about the kingdom of heaven and what it really looks like. Now, Yochanan the Baptist, he was John the Baptist. He had this very serious task uh, that was in front of him. So let's go and talk about what John had to do. Verse one, Matthew chapter three, verse one. In those days came Yochanan the Baptist, preaching, preaching in the wilderness of Udea. 
and saying, watch this, repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Uh, for this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Esaias, saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness, listen, 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 prepare ye the way of Adonai, make his paths straight. And the same Yochanan had his raiment of camel's hair and a lengthened girdle about his loins and his meat was locusts and wild honey. And then went out to him, Jerusalem, and all of Udea and all the region around about Jordan. And they were baptized of him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. All right. Now, what happens here is uh, people don't understand what the kingdom of Elohim is. And I'm going to read just a little bit deeper. I'm going to probably mess up some of you when it comes to this because you've never had it read this way. But I'm going to take verse seven and we're going to go down uh, just a little bit further. Um, to verse 11. Now watch this. But when he was seen by many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and those are your religious leaders of that day, they were over the temple worship, uh, and they would come out to see his baptism. And he said unto them, what y'all out here for? You, I'm sorry, I, I put that in. That's that's the BWJ translation. Let me, let me go back to King James translation. King James says, oh, generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath that's coming, the wrath that's coming, the wrath that's coming, the wrath that's coming. Now, I want to make sure we get this. Moderators, I need your help doing this very quickly. Would you please make it your business to listen to our moderators as they tell us what's next? Go ahead, Mods. Talk to them. Shalom. And thank you, everyone, for joining us this afternoon. We are here in the preceding word, and our topic today is Kingdom Life Biblically Explained, Part 1. We want you to know that the preceding word meets here every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We also are here under our Darash Kingdom Ministries Club, and so that means that we will be back to unite at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as we study in our Sabbath Midrash studies. Then we return again on Saturday mornings at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Then on Sundays, you can join us for the Morrow After Sabbath service. Every Sunday at 10.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then again during the week, we are here for our midweek Bible study mm -hmm. that is here every Wednesday, 7 p.m. And please don't forget our Bible Book Club that meets every Thursday at 1 p.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And just a refresher for you that, again, if you missed it in the beginning, our KYC classes are open for enrollment. And you can find those or you can email us to get details at staff.kyc at gmail.com. There is a tuition for this eight week class. Again, the KYC enrollment is open for Know Your Calling. And as Apostle mentioned before, last but not least, please don't forget our 21 day Man in the Mirror Challenge. We have memes posted on Facebook and Instagram and we are tweeting as well. So we hope that you will join us and that you are enjoying this challenge. Challenges are fun with other people, so please remember to like and share. Apostle, we're so grateful to be here. Yahweh be praised for your life. Back to you. Amen. Yahweh be praised for all of your lives. We are in this thing together. We're in this love together. All right, I was singing my head off too, and y'all y'all didn't even hear me. But as you said, I'm so grateful for your lives as well, and all of our great moderators and the leaders that are within this ministry. We're in this love together, together. I'm not bigger than you. You're not bigger than me. This is the kingdom mindset. All right, Matthew chapter three. Let's get back to that. <clears throat> it says that in verse number one. I'm gonna restart this again, guys. And I know you, you you've heard it, but I won't stop until I get to verse eight. He says, "In those days came Yochanan the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand.' Verse three. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, the voice that's crying in the wilderness." 
prepare you the way of Adonai, make his path straight. Verse four, and the same Yochanan had a raiment of camel's hair and le lengthened a leathern girdle about his loins. His meat was locust and wild honey, verse five. And then he went out, then went out unto him into Jerusalem, from Jerusalem, all of Judea and all of the region about Jordan. That's the river. Watch this, verse six. And we were baptized of him in the Jordan and they confessed their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said to them, O generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath of Elohim? Now listen to this closely. Listen to this closely. He says, bring forth therefore fruits meat for repentance. Now, I got to stop at verse seven because I want you to catch this. We're talking about the kingdom biblically explained. When he says, oh, generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath that is to come? Yochanan is, remember, he is heralding the coming of the Messiah. He is the go before for the coming of the Messiah. Here is something I want you to pay attention to. And theologians, I want you to catch this so you can teach this better and make sure that we're getting this throughout the entire globe because it matters that our relationship is right with the Father, not that your church is jam-packed. So here is the catch. Messiah came not to bring peace, but he came to bring a sword. Let that sink in. So when Yochanan makes this statement in chapter, uh, verse 7 of Matthew chapter 3, O generation of vipers, who has warned you to run, get away from the wrath that's coming? Yochanan knew that Messiah spiritually was about to be manifested to the masses as the Messiah, and Messiah did not come to bring peace. He came to bring a sword. Do you see the correlation here that the wrath was yet to come. Who did warn you? Yochanan wasn't talking about the end of days, like when Yahweh pours out his wrath and his vengeance upon the earth. He's talking about these who have been doing and telling and teaching Torah wrong in the temple, causing people to be subjected to their efforts to lord over them. And he says, who did tell you Pharisees? Because he, you're the reason he's coming. Who, who told you he was coming? That you guys are now fleeing, coming out here to get baptized and, and do this? Or are you just out here really just trying to look at what we're doing so you can, you know, make your complaints and what have you? They could never contend. I love Yonkanan. I love John the Baptist because they could never contend with him because he only ever always gave them truth. Now, here is the big thing. He says, so if you're out here to, to do this, bring forth, therefore, fruits that are meat for repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, wait a minute, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that Elohim is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Verse 10, and now also the ax is laid unto the root of the tree. What? Right. This Pharisaical, Sadduceical element was primarily made up of Levitical order. At this moment, Yochanan tells us this is when Yahweh began to remove Levi as the high priest. That's why you and I don't have Levi as a high priest. We have Yeshua as a high priest. Watch closely. Is Yeshua from Levi? Somebody tell me. Is Yeshua from the tribe of Levi? No. What tribe is Yeshua from? Uda. So by the time Yochanan comes, the people who are all things temple, i.e. all things church in charge of the temple, the synagogues, were the Levites. And the axe has now been laid at the root of that tree. <gasps> what? Right. Now watch this. Just like King Saul, when he kept doing his own thing, Yahweh went and ordained King David in a whole nother space. And was preparing for the replacement. This is why you and I now have no longer Levi as the Gadah Chohenim. We now have Yeshua HaMashiach as the Gadah Chohenim. For we have not an high priest who has not been touched by the feelings of our infirmities, but who has been in all points tempted such as we. He now a priest after the order of Melchizedek mm, forever. All right, let me keep moving because this is Friday and I got to get this done very quickly. Now watch. He says in verse number 10, the axe has been laid at the root of the tree. 
Therefore, every tree which brings not forth fruit, he's cutting it down and he's casting it into the fire. Now do you understand why Yeshua said, I don't come to bring peace because I'm coming to my own. I'm coming to bring a sword. Now, I want a little bit of monologue or dialogue here in this monologue, if y'all don't mind, because why does that make sense that he came to bring a sword? What can anybody give me some names that we call Yeshua, who John is talking about is coming? The Messiah is coming. Who is the Messiah? Do we have any uh, quick names for Messiah? Can, can anybody come off mic, say your name, give me a name uh, that you know that's connected to uh, Yeshua HaMashiach or Jesus the Christ? What do we call him? You know, the, 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 the Rose of Sharon, right? What else? Give me, give me, give me. I need about four or five. Let's see which one comes up first. Anybody? Eugene. Hey, Eugene, what you got, Doc? Give me one. Counselor. Okay, counselor. That's good. Anybody else? Shalona. Shalona, and I heard another name. Who was the other name? Hold on. Who's the other name? Rihanna. Rihanna? Veronica. Veronica. I need you to speak. I need you to speak English, child. Speak English. We're on the English platform today. <laughs> All right. Shalona, give me one more. Go. Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace. Okay, I heard that. Um, uh, Lily of the Valley, Pastor Montgomery said the Lily of the Valley. Uh, Simone Blessed says the Bright and Morning Star. Okay, uh, Veronica, who doesn't want to speak English today, what you got? I was going to say the Prince of Peace. Yeah, they stole your thing because you couldn't speak English. If you just spoke English, you'd have got it in first. That's okay. Uh, Raymond Stansbury, my brother, good to see you. He says the Son of Yah. Exactly right. He's the Son of Yah. Now, watch what we talk about with this because... This is where in this passage of Matthew chapter number three, he says, prepare ye the way of the Adonai, which is God the Son. Prepare ye the way he's coming wrapped in flesh in Isaiah 9, 6, for unto us a child is born, unto us the Son, the Son, the Son of Elohim is given. The Son of Elohim, Yahweh is the Father, Adonai is the Son, Yahweh is the engineer, Adonai is the articulator of those thoughts, right? So he has come in flesh and he's bringing a sword. Now, all those things we just heard, all those great epithets, all those great labels that we just put and associated to Yeshua HaMashiach, right? Watch this closely. He kept saying, I do not come to bring a, I don't come to bring peace. I am peace. I am shalom, but I'm coming to bring a sword. That thing keeps sticking in my head when we talk about the kingdom of Elohim and the earth. Why is it important to know that he says, I did not come to bring shalom. I came to bring a sword. Hebrews chapter number 12. Uh, Veronica, since you don't want to speak English today and you feel like speaking in other tongues, can you read? Yes, sir. Good. We're going to give you a chance to redeem yourself. Go to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 4 for me, please. Um, Abraska, Phasem, uh, Phasem, face me, um, says that he's the redeemer. That's good. I like that, Abraska. That's what he is, the, the, the redeemer. That's right. I love that. Are you there, miss? I don't want to speak English today. Yes, sir. <laughs> Go ahead. Would you read here? Listen, I did not come to bring shalom because I am shalom. I didn't come to bring that. You already got that. Watch this. I'm going to tell you how deep that is. You already got that. I didn't come to bring that. I actually now have come to bring a sword. So when Yochanan the Baptist says, who told you Pharisees and Sadducees to come? Who told you and warned you to flee from the wrath that is to come? The wrath that is to come. This is not the rapture. This is not the, the, the final day of judgment. This isn't even Sukkah. This isn't even one of the Moedim. He's like, who told you to flee from the wrath that's now coming? Because I'm heralding the coming of the Messiah. So that means that the Messiah was coming in wrath. He was. Because the actual temple was not doing the instructions Yahweh had given them. And this is where it gets deep. This is where it gets deep. This is where it gets deep. I want you to watch this. This is where it gets deep. He says, who told you to run from the wrath that's to come? Because he's just introducing the Savior. 
You don't believe that? Go to John 1 and read verses 5 through 8, and you'll see that he was the one designed to tell us that Messiah was coming. He was the one designed to tell us, hey, the king is coming. Hey, the Messiah is coming. Now watch this. This gets really good. Watch this. So he says he comes to bring, Yeshua says, I don't come to bring peace because I am shalom. He says, I'm coming to bring a sword. Now tell me what the sword is, Veronica. Wait a minute. I need another reader. Can I get another reader? Spencer. Thank you, Spencer. Can you go to Ephesians chapter number chapter six for me? This is coming off the cuff, y'all. This is Ruach speaking. Uh, Ephesians chapter six. Would you pull that up and find uh, verse number 10? Take us to 10. Ephesians 6, 10. Take us to 10. And you'll read from there when I call you. I want y'all to understand what the sword is and why Yochanan says he comes with wrath. The wrath is coming. Watch this division so you can see the kingdom, Okay. Veronica, read Hebrews chapter number four, read verse 12 for me. Go. For the word of Elohim is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joint and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So the wrath of Elohim is coming to bring a division between the religiosity and the pureness of Elohim's instructions to propagate his kingdom in the earth. And Israel, not keeping his words clearly, have gotten themselves now subservience to other nations and other kingdoms, which can only happen under Yahweh's watch when you're not obeying his words. Yochanan is saying, here comes the wrath of Elohim because y'all shouldn't be in this condition. And the wrath of Elohim is coming. And Messiah then gets here and says, I didn't come to bring shalom, the good stuff. I came to bring a sword because we got to trim the fat back off the stuff y'all been put forward. That part. Take me now. Ephesians chapter 6. Pastor Spencer. Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 10. Go. Finally, my brethren, be strong in Adonai and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of Elohim that ye might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of Elohim, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked here it is listen y'all and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit mm which is the word of Elohim. Repeat that last sentence. Which is the word of, and taking the sword of Ruach, which is the word of Elohim. So taking the sword, which is the word of Elohim. So when Messiah came, he's the living word. That word, um, Veronica, where you at in Hebrews 4.12? Read it for me. So that word, that word is what Messiah is. He's the living word. So when he came, though he is the shalom, he is the peace. He came to bring the word because the word now has to trim back all this unnecessary stuff we have added, which is why Jerusalem was under siege by Rome. 
man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahweh. If Jerusalem is to succeed, they must keep the instructions Yahweh gave to Moshe. When you don't keep the instructions Yahweh gave to Moshe, you end up being cursed with the curse of Devarim 28, 15 through 66. So Messiah came to tear down the religious structure that they've created, which is what got them under Rome, and to bring division. He come to bring wrath, and the wrath, the wrath, the judgment begins in the house of Elohim first. Ooh. So Yochanan wasn't tripping when he looked at the Sadducees and the Pharisees, who were technically the teachers of the temple, and said to them, who warned you guys? That he coming with wrath. Because he's about to come and cut all that up that you did. Everything y'all have been doing that got us in this trouble, he's coming to cut this up. And Messiah vets this. I don't come to bring shalom. I am shalom. I am peace on earth. God's will towards man. Did y'all get that? Did, did y'all did y'all get that? I Yeshua was peace on earth. He was God's will towards man. Oh, the song made y'all sing it different because of Christmas. You know, the old holy night hymns. Oh, right, right. Let me break that down real quick before I move any further. Yeah, because it was like, you know, oh, holy night, you know, uh, hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king, peace on earth, goodwill toward men. No, 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 no. What happened when those got that instruction, the shepherds, the angels let them know that Elohim Shalom is now on the earth. That's what Yeshua HaMashiach is. Isaiah 9, 6. He's the Bar Shalom. He's the Prince of Peace. Don't call him Prince of Peace in English vernacular if you don't know what it translated from. That word Prince of Peace is Bar Shalom. Peace is a word in Shalom. We translated it to mean peace, and we relegated it to something less than what it was. Shalom are 13 attributes. He is Yahweh's shalom walking on the earth in flesh. So he is, he didn't come to bring peace. He is shalom. He came to remind you of the word. And that word, read for me, Miss Veronica. For Elohim's word. For the word of Elohim is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. See, because what was about to happen is Messiah being the living word is about to bring discernment between what is religious and what is his kingdom, between marrow and joint between soul and spirit. He's about to help you by virtue of the word be separated if you choose because the word's going to show you what you need to be separated from. Many of us talk about the word of God, but we don't mean it. The word discerns the intents of the heart. These Sadducees and Pharisees, the ax has been laid at the tree. They've already been in Elohim's process removed from the carriers of the Torah. Now, to my Jewish brother and sisters from Judaism and Messianic Judaism, uh, whether you are coming out of the tribes, we love you guys. Y'all know we do, whether you're Mennonite, Zemet, Yenonite, uh, or Ashkenazi or Sephardic. Y'all know I love y'all. Don't come for me like that. But this is history. The axe was laid at the root of the tree because the Pharisees and Sadducees, he just checked did not keep Torah. That's why the people, that's why Jerusalem, that's why they were under siege by Rome. If we were keeping and they had kept the Torah, they would be the nation that all nations came to. But they did not keep Torah. They did religious stuff. They kept the ceremonies, but they did not live Torah. They did not admonish it properly. And then those who were responsible for carrying it out and sharing it with the people, helping them to become, as Paul says, students of the word, becoming students of the word who could rightly divide the word of truth, not becoming ashamed, not, you know, Paul says, you know, study to show yourselves approved unto Elohim, workmen that need not be ashamed, those who can rightly divide the word of truth. If they had been doing that, Rome would have never overtaken them. 
this is just a fact we cannot we can't avoid it we got to stick to that and understand that so when he talks about the kingdom now I, I set all that up in all of that necessary drama. It can offend you. It can rub you the wrong way. It can abrase you. But now let's look at the cure. Let's look at what the kingdom of Elohim really is and how Yahweh has always intended for it, his word, to empower us. First, Messiah says the word. That's the sword. You see that by Paul writing it. The, the word is the sword, right? The sword is the word, right? We know that, right? Yochanan tells us that Messiah is bringing wrath. Yochanan told you, I didn't come to bring shalom. I am shalom. I came to bring a sword. So this same sword in three different places we vet is the word of Elohim because Messiah is the word of Elohim in flesh. He comes to discern. He comes to set at alt i did not come to bring peace i came to bring a sword i want to discern we need to see all that we've been doing contrary to the word of elohim now watch this this gets really deep this gets really deep watch this next part we're almost done guys so verse 10 thank you for reading uh for those who helped me read verse 10 i'll reread verse 10 catch it the axe is laid at the root of the tree why? Because you guys keep thinking, Father Abraham, and all. Yeah, that's wonderful. But don't get it twisted. Y'all ain't that deep. If Yahweh needs to, not only can he cause rocks to praise him if we won't, he can also raise up from these stones seed to Abraham. This is Yahweh we're talking about. Don't come out here giving us that religious banter. Talking about, I'm up to Abraham. And you're, you're. Shut up. Sit down somewhere because Yahweh can fix that too. He chose Abraham to bring his savior through. He chose Abraham and his loins to bless Israel so that they could be the demonstration of what the kingdom should look like in the earth. Ooh, there it is. That's the Israel that we must understand. They were designed to show the world how to operate the kingdom of Elohim so the rest of the world could be found as uh, so the rest of the world could find how to be reconciled to the Father. Yahweh used Israel to redeem humanity. Then when Israel did not remain consistent, he brought through Israel Messiah, who would obey unto death. I hope that makes sense to you. Now, now, now look at this next part, verse number 10. He says, the axe has been laid at the root of the tree. Because Levi, y'all done messed up so long, it, it, it's, it's over. Levi, you're being removed. Therefore, every tree which brings not forth good fruit, he's going to hewn it down. He's going to cast it into the fire. I indeed, Yochanan says, I baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that comes after me, he is mightier than me. Whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He will baptize you with Ruach HaKadosh and with fire. Let me ask y'all a question. How many of y'all know that the Feast of Yahweh proved... From Pesach to Shavuot, well, let me say it again, from what y'all call Passover to Pentecost, that when Messiah came, he was the word. He baptized them in his word. Watch this. And he baptized them with the Holy Ghost and fire. Here's why. He gave them the word in Pesach. He rose again in Pesach and told them to wait for the promise of the Father, which was Shavuot, i.e. Pentecost. And what happened at Pentecost? Well, they were baptized in the Holy Spirit and with fire. Messiah technically recites these very same words in proper order in the book of Acts. Yochanan purely baptized you with water, but now you're about to be baptized with fire. After that, Ruach HaKadosh has come upon you. Do y'all see the connection there? Okay, let me keep moving because we got a lot to talk about. He says again, Indeed, I baptize you with water. He's going to baptize you with Ruach HaKadosh and with fire. Did that not happen at Pentecost, at Shavu? Anybody say yes or no? Yes. Yeah, it did happen, didn't it? It did happen. Moving forward. Now, watch this. Watch this. Matthew chapter number four now, which is another very interesting passage of the writ. I want you to catch this before I go into Matthew six. Matthew chapter four. Let's go to verse number 17. Everybody go there. All right, let's go here. Let's go to verse number number 12. Verse number 12. Eh, you know what? Let's go to verse number 11. 
we're going to talk about when Messiah was taken into the wilderness to be tempted for 40 days, right? He comes out. Verse 11 says, then the devil leaves him. Verse 11, I'm in Matthew 4, 11. Then the devil leaves Messiah and behold, the angels came to minister to Messiah. Verse 12, then Yeshua had heard that Yochanan got cast into prison. He departed into Galilee, leaving Nazarene, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the sea coast in the borders of Zabulon, Naphtali, right? And that it, I'm probably, let me repeat that, which is upon the sea, the sea coast in the borders of Zebulon and Nephilim, right? Verse 14, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying the land of Zebulon and the land of Nephilim by the sea beyond Jordan Galilee of the Gentiles. Verse 16, the people which sat in darkness saw great light. Oh my goodness. And to them which sat in the region and the shadow of death, light has now sprung up. Did y'all get that? Maybe y'all need to read John chapter one, verse four. Can you go there real quickly for me, Miss Veronica, who wants to speak English now? Can somebody go there for me? John chapter John chapter one, uh, read verse uh, read verse three and four for me. Go. Oops, I got it. Verse three. Well, read. All things were made by him. All things were made by him. You know what? Read verse one. Go. In the beginning was the word, mm -hmm. and the word was with Elohim, mm -hmm. and the word was Elohim. Mm -hmm. The same was in the beginning with Elohim. Mm -hmm. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made. So every, was everything was made by the word. Listen, everything was made by the word. Yeshua is the word in flesh. Huh. Everything was made by the word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with Elohim. Why? Because the word was Elohim. Again, that's the Adonai of Elohim. Why? Right? God the Son, right? And read that last verse again. All things were made by all him. things were made by the word. Read it and, and now keep keep going. And without him, and without the him. word was not anything made that was made. Read on. In him was life. In the word, huh? uh, in the I'm feeling this in my listen. In the word was life. Read on. And the life was the light. Of and the life was the light of men come back with me don't you stay there veronica y'all come back with to me with me to matthew chapter 4. look at what he says in verse 15. verse 14 that it might be fulfilled that which was spoken of by the prophet the land of zebulon the land of nephthali by the way of the sea beyond jordan Gal jordan galilee of the gentiles of the gentiles verse 16 says the people which sat in darkness because Messiah is coming through saw a great light. Help me, Ruach. And them which sat in that region and shadow of death, light is now sprung up. <sighs> Messiah was raised, helped to be brewed there. He was raised up there. That's the light because he's the living word that sprung up. Did y'all get that? Is that making sense? Nobody said, wow. Nobody said, ooh. Nobody said, that's, I just, I just, that's right there. You can't unread that. Now watch. He says, from that time, Yeshua began to preach. I'm going to reread it again because I, I think I might have made some people mad. Listen, people which sat in darkness when Messiah came through after his days of temptation, got baptized in the Jordan, now people saw a great light. That same light is the word in flesh. Veronica, would you read for me verse number three again? All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Next verse. Verse four, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. In the word was the life, and the life is the L-I-G-H-T of humanity. Go down to verse 14. And the word was made flesh. And the word was made flesh. Again, proof that Yeshua is the word in flesh. Read. And dwelt among us. 
and we beheld his glory. Hold it. So the word in flesh dwelt among us. That's Yeshua. Sprung up in Galilee. That light sprung up in the region where there was darkness because Messiah was there. That darkness, that shadow of death, that light sprung up there. Those who were over there in darkness because of Messiah's existence there, because he was kicked out of Jerusalem. Remember, in the land of the Gentiles, Galilee of the Gentiles, not Galilee of the Jews, Galilee of the Gentiles. That's where Messiah had to be partly raised. He was there, and that region that was in darkness, a Gentile area, saw now light. Messiah, the light, sprung up in that region. Are y'all getting that or is that too deep for Friday? Apostle. Who, who's, who's that? Say your name. This is Veronica. Hi, Veronica. Can I read verse five also? I'm, I'm trying to get, let me do what I do. Stop it. I'm trying to, go ahead, read it. Getting on my nerve here today, miss. I don't want to speak English until the revelation come. Go ahead. And the light shineth in darkness. Hold it. And the Stop. I was trying to take my time. I'm read sorry. it. Read it again. Read it. <laughs> and the light shineth in darkness. Wait a minute. You got to go back to verse four now. Okay. In him was life. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the life, which is the word, was the light of men. Remember King David said, thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Thy word is a light unto my pathway. What are we missing? Read verse five. And the light shineth in darkness. And the light shined in darkness. And the, and the darkness, darkness com comprehended it, it not. not. So that passage is directly connected to this in 13. Does, does anybody want to breathe for a second? I can give you a second to breathe because we've been riding past this stuff. We're talking about the kingdom biblically explained because we're doing a lot of stuff. We're doing a lot of stuff in the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom, and we don't even get it. We're going to get to this very important point, and we're going to let you guys go home. I'm not going to hold you all long today. Did someone have something to say? Roundtree. Roundtree, go. Um, what I love is that it cross references with Isaiah. It says Isaiah, but it shows how it was always Yahweh's plan for the path that he had Yeshua to walk. Sometimes we may think that from the beginning of the earth, yes, he was promised to be here, but we can see as we look through the Torah and through the prophets, how different parts of Yeshua's life were prophesied in such a way that you cannot deny that it was Yeshua of Nazareth, you know, not somebody else. The way that his life portrayed and the timing of everything, right. how it matches up with the Old Testament just solidifies for us that this is the Yeshua. This is the promised one. Right. So Isaiah speaks from the very beginning to the end. Isaiah 9, 6 talks about Yeshua HaMashiach. He talks about the, the child born, the son given. The son is the word. The child is the flesh. Yeshua is the flesh and Adonai is the word. That would become wonderful. Counselor, mighty Elohim, <gasps> Bar Shalom. Then you have him in Isaiah chapter number. Well, I'll just use this one. Isaiah 53, when he says, to whom shall the arm of Yahweh be revealed. He shall grow up before us, grow up before us like a young, you know, a sap, you know, uh, and, and then he talks about the, the dynamics of what he will do and how he's supposed to live, knowing this is the Messiah. Yochanan in Matthew, and Luke writes this to make sure that we understand that as the prophet Isaiah had said, he even gave the very region that the Messiah would spring up in. And the Messiah, being the living word, is the light because the life which is in him, the word of Elohim is life. It gives light. See, the kingdom is about light, not darkness. The kingdom only has the lights on when, in fact, 
the word is active. So many of our churches don't have the word active and we got these shadow areas. We got these areas where the light's not shining because the light was in our presence and it shined in darkness, but darkness comprehended it not. Watch this. This is an indictment. I don't want nobody getting mad at me. I'm just reading the writ. The light shined in darkness but darkness comprehended it not. Christendom has the Torah and we were told not to read it. The light shined in darkness and darkness comprehended it not. Come on. Wow. 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 Teach that to us. It's yeah. so good. Yeah. Y'all okay? Yes, sir. Yes, bring it. Because we thought it was for someone else. And that's where we didn't comprehend. We didn't comprehend. We didn't understand that. The light's been, sh it's been trying to shine. And David tried to keep, keep us mindful of it. And we quote it like we know it. Oh, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. Quicken thou me according to your word. The word made the world and all that therein dwells. And what we've done is we've allowed ourselves to not find the truth of where we need to be with him. So I don't want to be deep and trying to be all, you know, extra, 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 extra crazy with this stuff. But we don't like to hear that truth because it bothers us that we missed it. And then we don't think it takes all that to come back around. And that's why Yochanan said that to them in chapter three. Who told you leaders of the church to flee? Because the sword's coming. You already feel some kind of way because the axe is at the root of the tree. That means he's cutting and severing everything that would bring your version of fruit, your tree, its life. You've allowed for your entire structure of this tree to actually bring in a whole bunch of other stuff. And we can't keep this fruit going forward. So this temple worship you've now made God. Yeah, Yeshua's coming to show y'all how it was supposed to have been done a long time ago. And he's cutting off every branch that does not bear fruit. That's why he says, I didn't come to bring peace. I came to bring a sword. And the word will always discern what the truth is. Okay, I got to keep moving because we got to get back to what the kingdom is about biblically. Is this helping anybody? I, I, I realize I realize we're going to lose we're going to lose a lot of followers or a lot of people. I'm not here for followers. I'm here for those who uh, are wise. Any 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 truth seekers out there? Anybody anybody here truth today? Anybody here in truth today? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Clear. Anybody yes, sir. anybody here in truth today? Y'all know what that means if you hear truth, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Who who sits and listens to truth? Anybody know? Wisdom. Pastor Spencer, Wisdom. can you help us out? Pastor Spencer, can you help us out? Who who sits and listens to truth? I think I have a connection. You're going in and out. Let me go out and come in. Okay. So we we got to understand. Somebody let me know when she's in. We got to understand what that means and what that looks like when we talk about the kingdom. Now, I'm about to sum up everything. I'm hoping you guys are willing to listen to this. I'm going to sum everything up right here, and I want you all to catch this because this is going to be how you're going to start your uh, your time of Shabbat. Many of you who are already in Shabbat in the uh, uh, Vietnam, Shabbat Shalom to you uh, in uh, Uganda, Shabbat Shalom. So you're going in and out. I'm going in and out. Okay, it, it's not just me. It's me? I, I don't know why. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was me. Can y'all hear me? <laughs> you know what? Y'all not going to accuse me too many more times. You heard me? We love you, sir. We're just trying to hear. Okay, can you hear me now? We don't want to miss nothing. Can y'all hear me now? Testing, one, two. Testing, one, two. Testing, one, two. Testing, one, two. Can y'all hear me now? Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, 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 sir. 
So what I was saying, Pastor Spencer, was we were talking about um, wisdom. Okay. Hey, hey, Dianc, I love you, dear heart. Uh, we're talking about wisdom. So um, who, who, when truth speaks, who sits down and listens? Wisdom. Wisdom. Wise people. So we're speaking truth and, and you are some wise people because you're still sitting here listening. And here's a fact, wise people, they grow to get old. Fools, they don't grow to get old. Somebody say, I'm a truth seeker today. I'm, a tr I'm seeking truth today. So, 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 so I wanted to make sure you understood verse 16. We're in, we're, we're in, we're in, we're in Matthew 4, 16. I want to get off of here because I got to Matthew chapter six, because this is your favorite passage, but you're going to learn it better today. Watch the people which sat in darkness saw great light. So I think we've effectively made that point. Y'all got that so far? Yes. And them which yes. sat in the region and shadow of death, light sprung up within them. Got it? And from that time, he, they basically identified Yeshua. From that time, Yeshua began to preach. He didn't go, and God said, come now, dear, up in here, up in here. He didn't do all that. He, he began to proclaim the teachings that were in him and say to the people, repent. For the kingdom hey, of heaven is at hand. Guess what he said? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. To whom shall the arm of Yahweh our Elohim be revealed? Because the kingdom of heaven <laughs> is at hand. And I'm gonna leave y'all to hit that one. Let that I'm gonna let that sink in. I can't stay there because I get stuck. I want to know who caught that later. And Yeshua said, "Repent, for the kingdom is right in front of you." Y'all cannot try to tell you the kingdom is coming and His wrath with Him. <laughs> okay, now let's go because we're talking about Yochanan promoting and propagating that messiah is the light that yeshua is the messiah he's going to baptize you with fire i'm baptizing you with water when he come i can't even tie his shoelaces just just how bad and deep he is he's the living word he is the light that springs up according to the prophecies of the prophets isaiah now let's go to he of uh, matthew chapter six we're talking about the kingdom we're talking about the kingdom <laughs> Here we go. Watch this. Watch this. Hey, he said, verse one, take heed that you do not alms. Try it again. Can y'all hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Verse one, Matthew six, one, take heed that you do not your alms before men so that you can be seen of men. Otherwise, you have no reward of Yahweh, which is in heaven. Verse 2, therefore, when you do your alms, do not sound a trumpet before you like the hypocrites do in the synagogues. <gasps> he called them out. He called out the people in the synagogue. He called the church out. Y'all didn't see that? Okay, let me stop. Do it again. I'm going to do it again. He says, when you do your alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, you got your reward. Verse 3 says, but when you do your alms, let not your left hand know what your right hand is doing. So if you out here in the streets and you on social media and you got a ministry in the church and you bragging about how much gas you buying for people, how many turkeys you delivering to people, how many uh, masks you taking to people and you bragging about this, this is what we do. That, that you, it, it, He said, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is. Okay. Do your arms in secret. 
That's what it, verse four, that your alms may be done in secret and your father who sees in secret can re, mm -hmm, reward you openly. Somebody say, I got to do it in secret. 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 I, I got to do it in secret. So here's the catch. And here's, here's a bigger problem. Watch this next part. Watch this next part. He then says in verse number four, he says that your arms may be done in secret, that Yahweh, 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 which sees in secret himself shall reward you openly. And I think it was funny that he put the himself in there because it's like, you know, Yahweh not going to bring a whole team to check out what you're doing. He's going to see it himself. Just you and him know what you're doing. That's where your heart needs to be. Stop trying to get people to see what you did. Oh, I, well, we do this and we do that and we do the other. If you do it, do it because it's needed and stop trying to get glory out of it, acting in false humility. Are y'all understanding that? Now watch this next part because I got to get done. Here's the kingdom. Here's the kingdom. Here's the kingdom. And when you pray, also don't pray like the hypocrites pray. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues uh, and in the corners of the streets uh, and that they may be seen of men. <coughs> yeah. OK. Uh, that they may be seen of men. Uh, and Yahweh says, that's that's your reward. Men will see you and men will think, oh, you so deep, Mr. Pastor Man. Woo, look at Deacon pray. Pray deep. He prayed heaven down. He sent up timber. Did you see all the timber he cut down and sent up to heaven? Tell me this, y'all. Why y'all trying to burn heaven down? Why are you sending wood up to heaven? You, 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 you trying to burn heaven down? Why are you sending timber? Why are y'all sending timber to heaven? I'm trying to figure that out. Didn't, didn't, didn't he put trees on earth? He, he ain't put trees in heaven. Why y'all putting trees in heaven? Y'all trying to burn? He's a consuming fire. You know he's going to burn it all up. With you. Okay, anyway, let me move on. It's fun Friday. I'm going to keep moving. All right, verse number six. <laughs> but when you pray, enter into your closet. And when you shut your door, pray to Yahweh, which is in secret. And Yahweh, which sees in secret, shall reward you openly. All right, now, here's another point. Let me tell y'all something y'all might not know. I am not upset with this movie because they really do mean good. But this movie, the about the prayer closet, and you, you this is not an actual room that you go into that's brick and mortar. You, you, it's cool. You keep reminding yourself of prayer, right? And 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 let me give you. Can I give you a secret? Can, can I? Can I? All right. Can I? Can I teach y'all something? Do y'all mind if I teach something here while I'm while I'm sharing this lesson? Can I teach one little thing? I just want permission. Go just ahead. Facebook, 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 Facebook. Can I teach one thing? Facebook, IG. Can I teach one thing? Just one thing. I need permission though. Okay. I got Clubhouse said I can. Can y'all? Can I? Can I teach one thing to y'all? One thing about prayer. One thing about prayer. Okay. All right. War Room. Thank you, Trefania. That's what it was. It was called War Room. Let me tell you all about this. I want you all to get this. Here's the thing about Yahweh. When you give him something, leave it there. Thank you. What is he talking about? Watch. If you keep going to your prayer wall because you got these visual actualization walls, right? Everybody's supposed to like what you want. You know, you got to visualize it. So you put your vision board together. Some of y'all got your vision board full of prayers. Do you not know that every time you go back to your vision board to pray for what's on your vision board, you start the process over? No, what? I did not know that. that no. What? I'm waiting for you to make it clear. Because it means you don't trust Yahweh. That part. Did you give it to him the first time? Does he need you to remind him of what he needs to have done? Matter of fact, I think he tells you in Matthew chapter 6, I already know what you got need of. I'm letting you come in here to tell me so I know you know. I don't need you to remind me. And every time you say God, you put every time you put that thing in God's hand, in Elohim's hand, 
every time you put it in his hand and it's in his hand, he going to do what he do. You come back a week later and it ain't done. And you take it out of his hand when you say you ain't do this yet. OK, God, I'm going to give it back to you again. You just uprooted the seed, knucklehead. When's it ever going to take root? Wow. Teach, teach. Wow. So this is Crystal. Can I ask a question? Crystal, I do not have. Yes, I got love for you, Crystal. What you got? <laughs> okay. Okay. So can you explain that scripture where it talks about um, there's like there was an unjust. Yeah. Yeah. Judge, great. Great, Crystal. Kept throwing back and asking for. Crystal, you uh, are so connected to me in the spirit. It's just unreal. Watch. Because that's the thing I was going to give. Because that's what people are going. Everybody says, well, the, he said she was told to go back and pray. Wait. She never, that's not how you pray. Not with Elohim. You don't have to go back to the father and say, avenge me, my adversary. You say that to him once. An un, un, unjust judge is what we're talking about. See, an unjust judge and the righteous judge Elohim are two different things. Her conversation was with an uninformed, lazy, trying to get off work judge who did something just to get it done with. And she says, y'all, you know, that's not what the law says. You're supposed to do what the word says. She reminded the unjust judge to do what the word said. That's got nothing to do with you constantly going back before the father, asking God the same thing. Oh, God, do it for me. Oh, every time you go back and ask God to do it and you gave it to him already, he's already started it when he gave, when he gave it to you. And if it doesn't produce, it probably ain't for you. I'm going to stop right there. I got in trouble. We, we got that thing all mixed up. Don't we? You're going to give it to the father. He knows exactly what he's doing for you. He knows what you got need of. He knows what you got need of. You don't have to go into him asking him all day long. Well, the Bible says you can come before him boldly and make your request known. Yeah, do it. Make your request known. If it don't match up with the writ, he's not obligated to do it. Your job is to make sure what you ask for is in the word. Oops. Chrysla. Hey, Chrysla. I see what I, what I did, what I'm doing or how I'm looking at things because even with that scripture that I told you about, then there's a scripture about, you know, um, like even the enemy, like how he gives his children gifts, like how much more would your, would your father, mm -hmm. like your father would give you a snake, he wouldn't give you a stone for bread. Right, know? right. So I guess I'm looking at father and then judge and just, just jumbling it all in one. Chrysler, and, just like, and yeah. Chrysler, that's not just you. That's Christendom right now. Because we just jumbled all these things up together because they seem to preach well and they could give us a good sermon and something to talk about. But they are not biblically correct and therefore church i keep saying it because you preach the bible does not mean you are preaching kingdom the kingdom has a construct it's based on his word so if you have a request from the father let's just keep reading let's just keep reading i hope that this helps watch this i want y'all to catch this because this 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 is so helpful to me and i want everybody to understand this verse number seven look when you pray, oh, that's what I was talking about, war room. When you pray, enter into your closet. Now, those of us don't understand kingdom, but understand church, understand Christianity. We went and took the spare bedroom and or the walk-in closet, and we turned it into our um, shrine. That's cute. That ain't what he's talking about. It is not a brick and mortar place where you got sheetrock 
and studs, whether they're aluminum or wood, and you go in there and you put post ups and easy raise boards and you keep writing out your vision and putting these prayer requests in there on sticky post its and putting them up there and come back in there and visualizing them each day. Fine, visualize them, look at it, remember what you've asked the Father for, remember whether it's in His Word. So if you're going to look at it, make sure you can find it in the Word first and then put the passages of the writ underneath of it, and then you can submit that to the Father because He don't speak any language but His. So the prayer closet is not what the rural room represented. Now, it's a great message. It is. It's a great message. I'm not coming for it. I'm not coming for it, but I'm just making sure you understand the accuracy of it. Here is the catch. Here is the catch. Here is the catch. Your prayer closet is found in Numbers 15. It's called a tallit. You call it a prayer shawl. See... When you go into your room, they went into their tallit. It has an atara. It's got these corners called the kanaf. And then in the kanaf, they have out of the kanaf, the corners, they have zitzit, which are typifying the knots, the word of Elohim. So you're surrounding yourself in the word. And when you go into this space and everyone had a tallit, let me help some of y'all. Can I teach one more thing? I need permission. I can I teach one more thing? Facebook, can I teach one more thing? I'm going to let y'all go. Yeah. Facebook, can I teach one more thing? Okay, I got two thank yous. Listen, for those of you who don't know that the woman who had the issue of blood 13 years, Sorry. she did not touch the tunic. She did not see a tunic is a dress that men wore. See, technically pants was made for women because of their menstrual cycle. And men wore tunics, which is why you see people of, of, of certain countries wearing kilts. Just in case y'all didn't know, moderators help. So a tunic is what they wore under, watch this, their robe or under their tallit. Now, the tallit, numbers 15, is a commandment. Put fringes on your garment. They all knew this garment was their wraparound blanket. Everybody had this space because in the, in the time being Matic, they would use the tallit to even keep them in a windstorm that would give some kind of protection, right? It was like a blanket. <laughs> Many of y'all don't know it, but Charlie Brown, y'all know the cartoon Charlie Brown? Yeah, yes. That's a that's a Jewish produced program. Y'all know that, right? Y'all remember the one character yeah. named, y'all remember the one character named Linus? Yes. yes. He always carried that blanket? Yes. That was a representation of the Talit. He would kill you about that blanket. I'm going to leave that alone. That's to get the children used to understanding that at an early age, and they didn't. Okay, moving on, because a different culture. Y'all thought that was just for the Jews. Okay, so the tallit is the prayer closet. So when the woman with the issue of blood for 13 years, the woman with the issue of blood for 13 years, when she touched the hem of his garment, it was not the hem of his garment. She touched the helm of of his garment. Numbers 15 is the garment. The garment, watch this, when properly worn by the high priest, healing is in his wings. So they would take the two kanaf on each side, and when you wear your tallit, it will cover your back, come over your head, right above your nose, right after your nose, above your lips. And when you extended your arm, holding the zit zits in each hand by two, when you held your wings up, it looked like wings. There was healing in his wings. The wings came to be whenever you took your tallit by the kanaf and the zit zits and held open your arms while you had the atara over your head. She touched the kanaf. She touched the zitzit of the high priest. Healing is in his wings. Never touched his tunic. 
never touched his robe. She touched his garment. Yes. Yes, sir. So the tallit, guys, is your prayer closet. When you put the tallit on, it comes over your head in the atara. I promise you, if you ever start praying in the real war room, in the real prayer closet, your whole prayer life changes. <laughs> I trust, it trust me. And I dare you do it during Talit. Listen, in Shabbat, if I'm not on camera, I prefer the B. When I'm reading the word, read the word in your Talit. The problem is, you know, we got all these issues in our in our health today. And women, y'all be having these flashes. So, you know, y'all can't be, you know, <laughs> be too high. Y'all be like, God, y'all be Jesus. Y'all be fanning yourself. So, and now men having flashes. I remember <laughs> So what you do, what you do is you take the tallit and you bring it over your head, properly worn, and then you read the writ in it. Listen, when I tell you it blocks out everything of the world, I can't explain it to you. I could and make it like this marketing campaign and sell you the purpose of the tallit. I still never explain to you peace of talking to the father in the garment he asked you to make. Man, this is better than Superman going into the booth as Clark Kent and coming out as Superman. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? So when he says, when you pray, enter into your closet, verse 6, Matthew 6, 6, that closet is not a brick and mortar space. It's the Talit. Got it? Enter into your closet, shut your door, you bring it across your face, right? And your father, which sees in secret, because that's just you and him, ain't nobody in that room, can't nobody else fit inside your tallit but you. Even the children had their own personal tallits. That's what you would literally have your child dedicated back to the father with. At the time of a dedication service, like we do, every child gets a tallit. That's the blanket. I'm going to keep moving because that's a whole nother story. Um, at verse seven, but when you pray, don't use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they're going to be heard for their much speaking. Be not like there unto them, but be not like unto them, right? Then he says, for your father knows the things that you got need of before you ask him. So every time you go back to the father with your vision board and you put this up on the board and it ain't came to pass and you say, every day I pray for these things. Every day you pray for those things. You mean every day you pray for the same thing you prayed for yesterday. You keep uprooting. Your prayer is a seed. Your, your prayer is a request. It's got to germinate. It's got to gestate. And you keep taking it up and bringing it back every day. The same thing. Because when you give something to Yahweh, he only need to hear it once. He's not like man. Now let me give y'all a secret. Can I give y'all a secret? Can I give y'all can y'all get can I give y'all a hack? Since we're so good with hacks today. Y'all don't want to talk to me no more. I think everybody's lost. Yes, I want it. No, y'all want the hack? I want the hack. Y'all want the hack? Watch this. Here is what you're supposed to do. Once you've prayed it once, see our problem is we don't even know what we're praying. That's what James said. We don't even know how to pray as we are. Here's how you pray if you're going to ask him for something. Make sure it's a part of his word. Don't ask him for stuff that's not a part of his word. So if you want some other uh, woman's husband or some other man's wife, that is not a prayer of the scriptures. That is, You ain't getting it, okay? Go sit down. If, if you, What he is telling you is make sure your prayer lines up with the writ. Yahweh already knows what you got need of. And as long as you come to him with his word about that prayer, he will bring it to pass in his time. You may not be ready for it. So you keep knocking and asking for the same thing over and over and over again. You ain't ready for it. He'll give it to you when the time is right, if it's per his word. That's your first task. 
Now, let's just say you got that part done and you're praying an appropriate prayer that you are qualified for. Yahweh determines that you will know. So now, watch this. When you have not seen it manifest, you don't go back and pray for it again. You simply thank him for it. Yes, sir. Now you're watering that seed. Get the principle. That's the hack. Y'all might not like that, but just try it. See what happens. That's why Yahweh also tells us, in all things give thanks, for this is the will of Elohim concerning us who are in Yeshua HaMashiach. Just give him thanks. If it don't come to pass, thank him. If it does come to pass, thank him. If it still seems to be stuck in limbo, thank him. Let me tell y'all something. This is what I love, and I want y'all to understand. Listen, even Daniel didn't do this stuff we're talking about. Daniel prayed a prayer, and it got held up by the prince of Persia. And Yahweh was like, even the prayer you prayed before Daniel, the only reason to get there in time was because it was, it was in war. But Daniel didn't keep praying to God the same prayer that never showed up. He put it before the Father. He knows he's capable and able. So when you pray a prayer, make sure it's lined up in the word. Take that word to the Father. You need healing? Father, your word says healing is the children's bread. By his stripes we are healed. I am a child. I am yours, and by his stripes I'm healed. Your name is Yahweh Rapha. You said that this cancer, you said that this lupus, you said that this alopecia, you said that this gout, you said that this blindness, you said that this neurology issue, you said that this uh, broken arm, you said that healing is the children's bread. I'm here as your child, and I receive my healing now. And if it don't happen right now, I thank you tomorrow. If it don't happen tomorrow, I thank you anyway. If it don't happen next week, I thank you then. If I start seeing progress, I'm thanking you more. You're watering in what you have as a right in the kingdom. We got to start understanding the kingdom and not this churchiosity, hypocritical prayer life that we have been operating under all these years. Amen. Okay, I got to keep moving because this is the kingdom. Watch this. Watch this. But when you pray, don't use vain repetitions. Verse 8, be not like unto them, for your father knows what you got need of before you ask him. Somebody say, he already know what I need. Say it. Say, he already knows what I need. He already knows, he already knows, he already knows what I need. You, you, going in there, you, you going in there trying to burn down heaven, sending up timber. You know there's a fire going on in heaven. He's a consuming fire. It ain't, ain't gonna, you know, why are you sending fire? Like he needs you to keep sending up timber. Why y'all keep sending timber up to heaven? Sending up timber. Wow, well, I, I never got that part. Okay, so so here's the catch. He says, "Be not like unto them." Yahweh already know what you need of. Here is how you pray. You pray after this manner, Yahweh, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. Ooh, let your will be done, not on earth, in earth. Some might say, "I am the earth." Say, I am the earth. So when you pray this prayer, you're saying, Father, your kingdom come. Your will be done in this earthen vessel, just like it is in the heaven you reside. Verse 11, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. Thine, thine, thine is the kingdom. Thine, thine, thine is the kingdom. Let me help y'all. If you're talking about you're in his kingdom and you're not keeping his kingdom instructions, you're not in the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory and the glory. Remember what glory is. It's not some cloud that you get the chance to just run around in every now and then because you feel the spirit of the Lord, glory is an actual place where your provisions come from. Yahweh will supply all your need according to his riches in glory, according to his riches in glory, based on your knowledge of who Yeshua HaMashiach is. Okay, I got to keep moving to that one too. That's a whole nother service. For if you forgive men their trespasses, verse 14, Yahweh, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, then the father, he can't forgive you your trespasses. Kingdom, kingdom. So what y'all doing 
as you talking about this person and you're talking about that person, you won't forgive them what they did to you. I ain't gonna never forgive them. I don't care. I'm saved. Like, I know, am I preaching tomorrow night? Oh, okay, I gotta preach tomorrow night. All right, cool. <clears throat> so look, mm -mm, no, mm -mm, that child, mm -mm, listen, I can't listen, I, I can't forgive them. No, heck no. What 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 time? How much is my honorarium? All right, well, look, you work those details out. And mama finished talking to him over here about this piece. And you know what that person did to me? I will never forgive them. There's no way on God's green earth they would ever be forgiving me. I mean, hey, that's just it. Now they ain't got never see me again. They ain't got to step near me. No how, no way, no how. Okay, what time am I preaching in five minutes? All right, I'm coming to preach right now. It, 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 you won't forgive that man their trespasses, but you want Yahweh to forgive you yours. It ain't going to work. And then if he don't forgive you your trespasses, you're preaching in sin. That whole spirit is going to be connected to your sermon you think is edifying. See, the kingdom means you forgive so Yahweh can forgive you. Watch. Moreover, when you fast, don't fast like the hypocrites, looking all sad, like you smoking crack, your jaws all sucked in, you ain't ate for 30 days, uh, your face is all disfigured, uh, you, you got ash coming out your cheeks and you, you, your breath stink and everything. I'm sorry, that's not in there. That's the, that's the VWJ translation. Let me read the KJV. Moreover, when you fast, be not like hypocrites of a sad countenance, for their face is disfigured. They may up that they may appear to men as if they're fasting. Verily, I say unto you, they got their reward. But when you fast, child, grease yourself up, put that anointing on, on your head, wash your face. Yes, hydrate, hydrate, hypoxia. What's that stuff called? Hypoxia, hydrate. That you do not appear as if you're fasting in front of men, they ain't got to know you fasting because you're fasting in the Yahweh in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Lay not up your treasures for yourself, treasures on earth where moth and dust corrupt. Thieves can break in and steal. But lay up for treasures in heaven where neither moth nor dust can corrupt and thieves can break in and steal. Verse 21, for where your treasure is, that's where your heart's going to be also. Verse 22, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye be single, your whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, looking at everything it can get its hands on, your whole body is going to be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you be darkness, man, how great is that darkness? That's deep. Verse 24, no man can serve two masters. Either they're going to hate one, love the other, or else they will hold the one, despise the other. You cannot serve Elohim and mammon. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink for you yet, uh, or nor yet for your body, what you shall put on it. Is not the life more than meat? Y'all missed that. Is not the life more than meat? Y'all ready for this? I'm in. Is not the life more than meat? Y'all, y'all missed that. Is not the life more than meat? Y'all, y'all missed that. Is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? Here's what y'all made the mistake of: being Christian, being churchy. We missed what Matthew was writing here. What Luke wrote that Matthew said here. It says this is what Messiah says. Is not the life more than meat? Miss Veronica, you speak in English still? Y'all can't hear me? Miss Veronica? Yes, we can hear you. I can hear you. Are you can you where oh, she? Yeah, I'm still here. Oh yeah. I'm gonna need you to pay attention. <laughs> Get John 1 1 for me. Please. John 1 1. Hurry up. Listen, y'all. Listen, y'all. But if your eye be evil, 23, your whole body's full of darkness. Verse 24, no man can serve two masters. Verse 24, no man can serve two masters. Verse 25, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, what you're going to put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? Read John one three all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made verse four in him was life and the life was the light of men wait verse five. what 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 
wait, wait a minute. In him was life and the life was the light of men. So is that what he's talking about? Wait a minute. So verse three means the life is the word of Elohim. Wait a minute. Is not the word of Elohim more than meat? I'm going to sit yeah. there for a second. Let y'all let that sink in. You have never had this explained before. Is not life more than meat? Don't worry about your life, what you're going to put on it, what you're going to wear, what you're going to say, what you're going to drink. We've been talking and telling y'all that this is, you know, the life of garment, food, and drink. No, is not the word more than meat? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Wait a minute. Uh, who gave him meat? No one gave him meat. I have meat you know not of. I am the living word. Is not the word, is not life more than, I got to sit down because I, you know what, I'll talk to y'all about this on Shabbat. Wow. I never saw it before. These are the moments I sit here and look like, okay, Father, how do I take the silence? We're learning. We're chewing. Is not the life more than meat? The life is the word. Amen. Is not Amen. the life more important than meat you would put in your teeth? Because if you got the word, which is life in you, it will get you meat. It will get you food, uh, raiment. It will get you drink. It will get you direction. Is not the life more than meat? Now let's keep talking about the kingdom. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Here we go. Is not the life more than meat? And the body of Messiah being in it more than raiment your little church garb and go and, and gown and robe and your choir robe and your preaching robe. Isn't that better than the garment? Isn't, is, is not, is not the body of Messiah. Uh, is that not the important thing? Oh, 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 verse 26, behold the fowl of the air. They don't sow, neither do they reap. They don't gather in the barns yet. Yahweh feeds them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to your stature? Nope. And why take you thought for what to put on? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They don't toil, neither do they spin. Verse 29. Yet I say unto you that even Solomon, in all of his glory, one of the richest man on the planet, how well he was arrayed, he is not arrayed like one of these. Verse 30. Wherefore, if Elohim clothe the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Can anybody tell me what faith is? The word. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing comes by the word. You need clothing. You need food. You need the word because in John 1, everything that you and I know in this earth was made by the word. Last part, we can let y'all go home. I'm done. Verse 31, therefore, take no thought saying, what are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? Where are we going to be clothed? Because these are the things that the Gentiles seek after. Your heavenly father knows already that you got need of these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of Elohim and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. So what is 
John's issue when he says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Who's coming? Who is John saying is coming? The word in flesh. The word in flesh is the edict, is the governance for the kingdom. And what is right is found in those words. So if I'm going to seek first the kingdom, where my life is going to be sustained from, I have to first learn the governance of the kingdom. I have to seek Elohim's rightness. It's all the word, not your church event. Not your preaching style, not the art of preaching, not, not, uh, 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 your, your hermeneutical flow, not your uh, homiletic element, not your uh, posture and dress and dance. The kingdom and righteousness are what the word says. That's what was coming because the word is the sword. I'm going to say that again. He did not come to bring shalom because he was shalom. He came to bring a sword because the word is the sword. He is the living word. He is the shalom as well. But the sword deciphers, discerns, and puts things into perspective. Zion, I got to let y'all go now. It's time for me to get out of here. But don't take thought for what you're going to eat. Don't take thought for what you're going to drink. Don't take thought for what you're going to wear. The Gentiles who don't know my word, they seek after that. But Yahweh knows what you got need of and that you got need of all these things. But seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things we just talked about shall be added unto you. Added. Would that connect us to Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14? If you hearken diligently unto the words, which I give you this day, I paraphrase, then all these blessings shall overtake you. They shall run upon you and overtake you. Is that an addition? Yeah, that's an addition. All right, I, I heard a voice. Moderators, what's my cue? Thank you. See, Misty, go. So I have a Applicable question for you. I get the whole thing that you said every time we keep coming back with the same prayer, really setting the rules. But when you have a prayer that requires your physical participant physical participation to do something here on earth, and you're struggling in that application of doing, and you're asking for guidance. And they still tell you I'm lost. Acting our way. I'm, I'm lost. Okay. What, so, what what prayer requires your physical participation? So you're looking for a job. Okay. So you have to you have to put out your resume. Right. You have to constantly go on interviews. Correct. But you're not you're not finding the job or you're being turned down as if you asked your interview. Mm -hmm. And it says well you you're told you're instructed when you go to your recovery, other than you, go back to pray. Go back to pray about it. Okay. Now you bringing, you asking Yahweh for a job and that being physical participation, Yahweh, here's my request. Does he not know you are need a job? Yes. Okay. So what you must do is the job you think you're selecting is you got to vet that, that job through the word. If you feel that this job vets the word, it is within your skill set, your calling. This is why knowing your calling is so important, too, because your calling, along with your marriage, will help you to make the choice that's necessary between what types of jobs you select 
And sometimes you're not getting a job might mean it's right time for you to go ahead and start to do your own. I don't know why we think we got to go to Uncle Tom and we got to go to Walmart. We got to go to McDonald's to make money and to be our own. You don't have to do that. You've been trained by American systems and global structures to do that. You actually give your resource over to someone who can use it however they want when you can do the same thing yourself. That's another story for another day. Maybe next week when we talk about that. But here is the catch. You wanting a job, you pray, Yahweh, I need to feed my family. Man, don't work. He don't eat. He didn't tell you don't work for somebody. He said, man, don't work. That means you got to be a producer. So again, next week. But if you're not getting a job out there some way, you got to produce for yourself. Even Paul went from place to place. It doesn't say he helped people make tents. It says he made tents. So when we deal with that first, and I, I don't know why he keeps pushing that, but I want somebody to get that. Some of y'all are working for people, and it really ain't. That's that's not your heritage. That's that's not your. That's not what you should be doing. You need to be working for yourself. There is a thing called free enterprise. Even in this country that's called a capitalist country, you have an opportunity to have your own business. And we are really, in some cases, um, you know, we're, we're not willing to make because we start so late the effort to start your company up. But if Yahweh guides you, that company won't have to do a whole, you'll have sweatless victory. You'll have sweatless victory. You'll have an income stream that is voluminous and in perpetuity, especially if you honor him in his commands on your life. So back to your question. Sorry, I gave you all too much information. Your question. Says, so what do I do when I'm not getting a job and I got to keep going after and searching for a job? Well, each job you bring me for the father. Father, is this for me? Before you even go apply for it. Father, is this for me? Father, I tell y'all right now, bring your requests into Shabbat. Get yourself a tallit. Now, y'all going to think I'm being sort of kind of, you know, like uh, um, technical. I'm not. Get yourself your tallit. You looking for a job? Bring your request into Shabbat. I promise something in Shabbat, if not week, week one, week two, maybe week three, if you ain't got a job, because some of y'all take three, four months to get a job. Bring your request for, for a job into Tali, into Shabbat before you apply. And if you got a covering who cares for you, some of us know how to do that, who have been in management for so long. We we know how to actually say, well, this doesn't even fit your mold. If it's just for the money, you won't have a problem because money can't fix all your problems. You, you got to have something that makes you really want to do it because you can get a whole bunch of money for a job. You hate the job. You get the money one time and you're out. But if you love what you do, it could be a little bit of money. You will build on that because you're doing what you love. You'll never go broke. I think that what we need to begin to do is to uh, put what we are looking for um, in a uh, ultimate way before Elohim so he can guide our way. Some of us are going out there and I, I talk to people all day. I'm a life coach, as y'all call this now. I've been that for been that before there was a life coach. We're, we're putting down these jobs because the money is good. Or we set this list like we do for our new our new husband or our new wife, and like, they need to look like this. They need to have this much money. They got to have this. They got to do this. You got this list for your job. Let your calling help you determine what your job is going to be. This is why knowing your calling is so important. Get a job. Man, don't work. He don't eat. It does not necessarily say you got to work for another man. It says man, don't work. He don't eat. We have been programmed to go to work for someone else. Why can't that be us? That's not C. Mystique's question. Her question is the repetitive prayer. So let me be very clear. Somebody needed that, and I hope that was a blessing for y'all. Whatever you put before the Father, make sure you vetted it first. The best way to vet it, in this case, see mystique, since you put it out here in public like this, rather than I wish you to come in, come in private, because now I got to talk about it this way. 
Um, let's sit I'm down. Looking for a job, sir. It's literally just a question. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you, Father. I'm, I'm sitting here. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm over here choking. All right, I'm over here choking up. Like, yeah, I, now she's gonna make me have to tell her this stuff out here and all put her business out here. <laughs> Don't worry about it. We good. Okay. So here's the catch. And I'm glad you did it that way. It, it, listen, y'all. It's the same way when you pray for anything else. If you don't get it, it's not for you. Some of y'all think you got to fight for it because you're being held back from it. No, it ain't for you. Let Yahweh tell you what is. Who says you can't be the next employer in your neighborhood? you're doing the same thing for yourself you can get a business license you can get a business name you can get a business loan <clears throat> and if you really complain about the industry in itself and you really love it that much and it's really what you do you can do your version and somebody yahweh will make like it Working does not mean you got to work for someone else. Now, back to C. Mystique's question for the example of prayer. Where there's physical requirements needed, you pray over each function. Job is the issue. The actual prayer is which of these to choose. Start there. Put what you want to, what you think is available, what you think you're capable of before the Father, and then whichever one comes out of a Sabbath or two Sabbaths, then you apply for that. The other ones you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't regard. Let Yahweh in all your way acknowledge him. He will direct your path. We go on auto mode. Oh, I need a job. So you just start applying for jobs. No, in every step of that process, you acknowledge the father. You need a job or you're really saying I need money. What you're really saying is I need to work so I can eat and feed my children, feed my husband, feed my wife, right? You still have to acknowledge Elohim in that way. What should I be doing, Father? Instead, we go through and give our CV and give our resume to a headhunter, and then we let them say, well, you can do admin, you can do construction, you can do electricity. These jobs are available in that vein. That's not what you love. That's what you, that's, 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 that's what you think fits what you need. It's not what you love. It's not what you need, but you need money and that's a way to get it. And then you take a temporary band-aid and make it a permanent fix and you, you muddle through life just doing that. I want y'all to come out of that. I want y'all to come, come out, says Yahweh, come out, come out. Find what Yahweh has made you to do and do you. Somebody's going to love you just like you love what someone else does. And you're willing to work for that. This is a prophetic moment. I'm sorry. I can't. I'm trying to stop. That's why I can't answer her question straight for somebody needs this. Come out. You have everything you need. It's already in you. It's already in you. Acknowledge him in all your way. He will direct your path. You got to trust him, not go and tell him what you want and God get me this job. That's how we're praying. Instead of saying, Father, What should I be doing? Instead, we go in like we did many years ago with newspapers and this job is paying this much money. Oh, I need that much money to pay all my bills. Oh, yeah, let me apply for it. Oh, do I qualify? Did I get the degree? Did I get an education? Oh, my education matches it. I should apply for it. That's not healthy. Not for you, not for your calling, and that's not kingdom. Come out. Map out what you are, what you do, what you want to do. Who says you can't share in the space that what you have the best skill sets for is there? How many businesses go out of business every day? 
Stop not trusting you. You are willing to trust it for somebody else. Trust you for you. Trust you for you. Gosh, Shabbat. Trust you for you. Like you trust you for someone else's vision. Ask the Father, what can I do? What am I to do? Trust you for your family's sake. Trust the gifts in you. Trust the skills in you. And be in control of your own destiny as it relates to earning money. Because he controls your destiny. Ask him, in my destiny, how do these skill sets I have fit in to me making money? You ain't got to work for Ford. You don't have to work for GM. You don't you don't have to work for electric company. You don't you don't have to work for the county. Take what you're looking for into the father. Now somebody saying, "Apostle, that's just very irresponsible to tell people that." No, it's not. Somebody made the company that you're going to hire. You're going you're going to get hired at, right? Or you want to be hired at. Somebody made it. You are somebody, you make yours. I wonder what could happen if you were consistent. Trust your skill sets and start your own. I really feel Ruach right here. That's why the Bible says he gives you witty inventions and ideas. Take what you need into Shabbat and let him tell you what you need and come out of there. He'll guide your path. He'll direct your way. You might start off small, but if he can trust you with a few things, he can make you ruler over many. It will require you to have not only the skill sets and the intellectual property to do it, but you're also going to have to have the discipline uh, to be responsible. But again, there's a whole system out here in the kingdom that's willing to aid you. And if you I'd rather give I'd rather give my business to anybody in the kingdom rather than to any Gentile out there who does not love Elohim. Because I'm a commonwealth man. So if we are all working for the kingdom, then the kingdom prospers when the kingdom supports each other, not this craziness that we do. We can't even support our neighbor in our own neighborhood who started a, a, a store because it's my neighbor. I don't want to see them get a new bike. I don't want to see them get a new car. You know, and what they sell, I'll just go buy it from Publix or Kroger's or Rite Aid or ShopRite or 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 or, or A and P. And they're selling the same thing. Start your own. Trust yourself. Trust you for you. All right. So I'm sorry to take y'all so long so far there. I hope that you guys were edified by that. Did y'all did y'all glean something out of there? Absolutely. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, definitely. Trust you for you. You got enough skill sets. They're going to use your skill sets up for them. Definitely. They're going to use your skill sets up for them. Trust you for you. And hire the people that you need to make sure you are in order with the government, with taxes, with the industry. It all works out in the end. We just don't get it. We don't realize that the gas you take to get there, the tolls you take to get there, the tear and wear and the maintenance of your car to get there is basically money that you can have diverted into getting yourself an investment and a proper coach for what you do well and a proper marketing strategy for what you can do well and how to get this thing advertised and pushed forward. And you'll be surprised. It may take a minute like anything else, but it will eventually take off. Trust you. For yourself and your family trust the gift of you trust the natural thing you do so well you talk well you a good customer service agent what is it that you do now if you if that's all you want to do then then whatever but trust you for you 
All right. Proceeding words should not be this long. We're supposed to be done. We're out of here. Kingdom. 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 Is his word. Nacho Hikamo Shandai. He coming in the Hyundai. Oh, 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 oh. Mitsubishi. Kingdom is his word. Using it because the life is more than meat. And the body of Messiah being in it is more than raiment in the natural realm. We got it twisted. Get his word, you'll have meat, drink, and everything else. Get in his body, you'll always be covered properly. <clears throat> I'm done. Moderators, tell us why we're here. Or was there a cue? No cue? No cue, sir. Good. Moderators, tell us why we're here. Shalom. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today on the preceding word. We are pleased that you have joined us and stayed with us for this time in our study on kingdom life, biblically explained in part one. The preceding word is here every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time under the preceding word club. If this is your first time in the room, please make sure that you hit the greenhouse so that you can be notified every time we open a room. We are Sabbath keepers in this house, and so we will be back under Darash Kingdom Ministries Club. So tonight, we have our Sabbath Midrash studies that start at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then we meet again on Saturday mornings at 11 a.m. On Sundays, join us for our Morrow After Sabbath Sunday service every Sunday at 10.15 a.m. And then again, on Wednesday nights, we have our Bible study at 7 p.m. All of this under our Darash Kingdom Ministries. And then our third club is the Bible Book Club, and we meet every Thursday at 1 p.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We want to remind you that we are doing the 21-day challenge. We are day five today, and it is a man in the mirror. It's not too late to join us in this challenge. Challenges are always better when they're shared. So please like and share this event. We have memes on Facebook, Instagram, and we are tweeting them. We also want to inform you about the next class for KYC. KYC will be happening uh, August 9th, 2022. And if you've not signed up for the Know Your Calling class, you can email staff.kyc at gmail.com. Again, that's staff.kyc at gmail.com. We thank you for joining us. We want you to know that all of our rooms are recorded live on Facebook, and you can find us at BWJ Ministry. Apostle, we turn it back over to you. All right, and thank you very much. We appreciate that. We get the best mods on the planet. Listen, we want to get done here. Shirley Love had a question. Shirley, if you're still there, I'm going to answer this question. I just saw it on the board. I can't read everything and catch everything when I'm teaching, especially when I'm in the flow. Um, sorry that I kept you guys so long and maybe bored some of you and gave you overload that you say you don't need, but trust me, you'll, you'll retain it. Um, Shirley Love asked a question. I think it's on, on Facebook. I, I know it's on Facebook. I can't find it now, but she says, can women wear a tallit? Absolutely, 100%. Numbers chapter 15, go read it, get the whole writing and context, and then if you got more questions, ask me. But everyone had a garment. Everyone has a garment. Everyone had that safety blanket. Yahweh said put fringes on it and then tie a ribbon of blue, make it sit sit. So, Shirley, if you're there, yes, you are supposed to wear your, it's a tallit as well. Matter of fact, the tallit, the tallit is actually... How many of y'all remember? Uh, how many of y'all still do? I don't know. Um, these, uh, let me be nice. Let me be nice. Let me be nice. How can I say it? Uh, you know the doilies that women are made to wear in certain denominations that they put on their head and it covers their tip of their head? Because like the yes, yes. women got to cover their heads, right? Uh, it, it Actually, that's 
that's the uh yeah that's 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 supposed to be the Talib. No, it's not. That's not. That's not how you're told. You know. Uh, so when when a woman does cover her head, she's using her to lead. Tracy said, "I will." <laughs> Tracy said, "I will not." <laughs> the dually, Tracy. Is it the dually? <laughs> Tracy says, "I will not." The doily, not the doily. Um, yes, but that's actually what the Tali, you already know. That's right, Tracy. Um, that's what the, that's what, for the women, that's, that's actually what it was. Now, women also are probably, you know, they have the ones that are, they, they're two foot by three foot, you know, or 12, 18 by, by 20, whatever. And they're, they're, they're short, like, like little, you know, modest things that you put up the top of your head, right? A real Tali, a real Tali for the persons that we talk about, um, is you know you're wearing it, it, it should be th three feet four feet by five feet you know for some of you because y'all shorter bigger guys you should be looking at something you know five foot by seven foot or four foot by six foot you know something that covers you like a blanket right that's a real tilly it gets hot in that but remember they use these things in all weather that's what the tilly was for now you got the little cute trinketries little cute novelties you know you put it over your head but there's a way you're supposed to wear that tilly many of you see me when i'm teaching on shabbats and or when you see me teaching in moedin i'll have the tilly and it's wrapped the way it's wrapped it, it's actually uniform uh for you know proper garbing but yeah that was the little ancillary trivia uh, we threw out there for y'all guys. So um, women do wear the tali. All people, your children should have one. Your Every time a child is born and we dedicate a child to the father, we don't do christening. We dedicate that child back to the father. Um, uh, yeah, we dedicate that child back to the father. Uh, and uh, we, we 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 require that that child it's 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 wrapping it's blanket it's 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 to get a, a to leap. usually our ministry will supply that as a gift sewn into that child and then it becomes the parents job who are part of the ministry uh to help their children understand the purpose of the to leap. you might say it's unnecessary that's fine but it's it's in the torah so we do it we wear it we keep it um, it's not something you brag about and you walk around with, but if you follow certain people, which I don't mind, I love to see them with the zit zits hanging out from the new cutoff versions they got today, the ones you can wear under your shirt. <laughs> Pretty cool. Um, but yeah, um, Wanda's asking a question online. Apostle, I was taught not to let the zit zit touch the floor. Is that true? I, I pray layer out of my floor and wondered about that. I pray layer out i pray and lay out on my floor and wonder about that um the, the zip I'm sorry, I no, yeah I, I got it i i figured out what you were saying i pray and lay out on the floor um yeah it, it's it's a it's a thing you don't when you're walking you don't let it drag if you're laying in your tali it's gonna be on the floor we're talking about letting it drag being disrespectful you know dragging it along the ground if you're going to wear your tallit, you roll it up a certain way so that the actual zit zits, when they, they dangle, they don't touch the ground while you're walking. Now, if you're laying in it or you got it over you as a blanket, you know, because y'all got to realize they serve dual purposes. They were their blanket, you know, and then it was their tallit and they got into their closet and they prayed. It was a personal thing. It smelled like you, your mustiness. It smelled like you. Um, you know, it, you know it, it's yours, you know, it's personal, you know, it's not, you know, it's not something you share. It's yours, your garment. Everybody has their own. There is, um, <clears throat> Tracy says, I'm so protective of my mind. I'm just asking, is there a proper way to store it? Yes, there is. Um, there's a certain way to fold it. I'll, I'll come on. Maybe, maybe, maybe this Shabbat, I'll come on and teach you guys how to do it. I'll, I'll pull the, pull my Talit out. Um, or just stay in it because like I'm in it before I come on broadcast and then I'll show you how to fold it um and it's real simple just when, once you fold it you know 
tuck in the zit zits and fold it over like you would use usually fold maybe a sheet for a bed or a twin bed or something uh not a fitted sheet but you know a sheet and uh, you fold it to where the atara is the long part out and what i can do also is fold it up into the point where it becomes about the size of my 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 billfold and uh, tuck it into what is a uh a, a prayer bag all right um uh, uh, the bag there's a bag that comes with some of them or you can even hang it uh on a hanger like you would hang a curtain and i put i have some hung up in my in my closet and you know certain ones just hang them up there nice and neat like pants yep there's a way you do all right yeah wanda yeah they come with some come with bags that are made for them all right, turquoise Trista said I got mine from y'all stop buying them off of Amazon all right look if y'all want to know where to get this she said, she said my ribbon of blue is turquoise what's going on what's really going on yeah you got got um just teasing <laughs> Chris I got mine from Amazon them jokers sent me a turquoise listen so here's the catch um there is a place called Judica <laughs> Judica got dot com. Uh, there's another one called Kabad, Kabad, Kabad uh, dot com. We'll we'll post them on our on our on our Facebook page, Apostle Vida Jones Facebook page, uh, for you guys to get it. Judica dot com is a real good place to get it. Go on there, look at them, and y'all, you know, I know they got these cute little designs and stuff, but it, all that fire of Jerusalem and fire of Elijah and all these fire, all my all that, it's, yeah, just get the talit it just the ribbon of blue now because the blue is an issue um because you can't get that real israeli blue that they did back in the apocrypha back in the day so now black has become the um you know mandated or regulated element so if you get black or you get blue like israeli blue would be uh if y'all pay attention uh the lighter blue on our logo is the israeli blue and then we have it mixed down to a royal blue and then a navy blue. So it's, there, there's a lot of colors in there, but that lighter blue on my on my uh, on my logo is the Israeli blue. So if you get something to that end, that's cool. And some even do the regular royal blue um, because it's supposed to get as close to Israeli blue uh, as they can get it. Because there's a lot that has to do with where they get the blue from. Some had a flower. Some used some stuff from the ocean, uh, and then they, they they drained it out to get that blue. Um, right tracy it hers came from israel get them from judica get them from chabad all of mine do come from israel directly and y'all be careful because them polyester ones <laughs> they keep you his hot um but if y'all <laughs> get y'all get y'all get one get a get a real wool one uh or um a solid material one so that it breathes all right um the companies i would recommend there's a lot of people out there that sell them you don't know what you're going to get till it gets there uh and if you get one that's got white zit zit rather than the blue zit zit again the blue ribbon pieces because the color so if you get it white that's fine uh, she said i got one that's turquoise i am in stitches over here uh, just get get an all white one you know with the talit with the zit zits that's going to be all white or if you get one that has a facsimile of the Israeli blue and not the turquoise. If y'all get a turquoise one, yeah, that's 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 the dollar store version. Don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, we're gonna pray for you, Crystal, that you get them for that you get the father send you the right one. All right, everybody, it's been a fun joy talking with you guys. What's wrong with polyester? It's hot, Daphne. Them two twins is a mess in the church. <clears throat> Polly and Esther that had they fit with y'all. I don't know why y'all ladies love Polly and Esther so much. They sure don't like y'all. They'd be burning y'all up. At Krista, contact me out. Let me let me see what you got. Send me a photo of what you got. Uh, Elder Page, put her on book so I can see what she got and we can check it out. All right, guys, I got to go. It's been a joy. We'll see y'all tonight for Shabbat. Uh, love y'all to life, man. I really do. And I uh, love y'all enough to tell y'all the truth. I hope that... Uh, 
I, I hope that it edifies your life and, uh, and, and, and causes your relationship with the Father to be greater. Yahweh, thank you again for this opportunity to share your word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of your mouth. What was spoken today in, uh, in, in, in this space, let it be uh, edifying to the bodies uh, and the, the, the people who had heard it and hear it uh, for your kingdom's advancement. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, I pray humbly and say, Amen. All right, everybody, we're going to let you guys go. Have a wonderful day. Trust Yahweh in all ways. Acknowledge him in all your ways, and he will direct your path. Shalom. Aleichem. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope that this message has been a blessing to your very life and your soul, and more importantly, your walk with the king. Well, we have come to the end. I hope that you would consider becoming either a partner with us in ministry, or if you're not already a kingdom citizen, consider becoming one. By doing that, you can sow into this ministry so that we are able to continue to teach this type of ministry at a grand scale. Join us on all of our social media platforms and visit our webpage to make your contributions sure. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Shalom Aleyh.